Debbie provided a real opportunity for me to kind of revisit why I volunteer for the Red Cross. Uh, we all do for our own set of reasons and have for a long time. But every once in a while you have this, the reason brought back home and Debbie certainly did it again for me. Um, and I'll share a couple stories. Uh, one of which is <clears throat> we had the client caseworkers that were going out in the field, reaching out to clients in their homes or outside of their homes. All of the, the newsreel film that we see, these people were out there day in and day out. We also had the client caseworkers in here in an office that were taking phone call after phone call for days, listening to life stories and for people reaching out for Red Cross help. So every day, every moment, it was brought home. Some of the, the teams that would come back in the evening would share stories. You could just, you could read it on their faces. Some of them were drained of energy. Some of them were just ready to go out and do it again tomorrow. But they shared a lot of stories with us of what they had seen, what they, the experience they had, and some of the real people that they met that brought it home to, to all of us. One story that, uh, there's a number of them, but one story that just kind of stuck in my mind is one street flooded, various stages of water still standing, and this is a week to a week and a half after the floods, after the event. And it was still flooded, and it was mostly a, a, a street of older people. And they went down and they found um, this older couple that were still inside their home, walking, continuing to walk in the water. This neighborhood had a septic system, and it had backed up, and I forgive me for the lunch conversation, but these people were in shock. They were walking around in their home, it was their home. That was the response that they got. The good thing is we had um, one of our nurses was in this outreach team and was able to finally coax these people out and to get some other help and to convince them. But they had been walking around salvaging whatever because the water would be down and they had work to do in their homes. And these people were just in shock. <laughs> And we forget that. We forget how real it is in their homes and it's their life. Perhaps they've lived there their whole life. Another story was um, one of uh, the people that reached out to us, there were a couple of them. We also do uh, condolence calls. Our uh, caseworkers, and this was new to me this year, I've learned so much. Thank you, Linda. Uh, but uh, we had uh, the, our nurse and our mental health specialist and our caseworkers go out on condolence calls when there's a death associated um, with a particular incident. That was, the, uh, uh, Brenda uh, was the head of health services and she did an incredible job with reaching out to the family and helping them through even making funeral arrangements. That was one of the things. And then there was the child that was airlifted up here to uh, uh, the Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg. Um, and that story will always stick with me. It was a case of um, a large injury to her leg that would, had been surgically repaired, but she was still in the hospital and she was about two years old, little toddler. Her mother was killed while holding this this young child running for cover to try to protect this child and the mother and they found the mother on a on a fence and she had passed away still clutching this child still in her arm they had a nine-year-old the nine-year-old is a little more aware of some of the things going on this other child is there and going through the injury but this mother's arms were still around this two-year-old protecting her even when this mother had passed away. These kind of things are the reason that we come every day. We had a follow-up visit, and interesting, the, the nurse that went on the first call still, I spoke to her a couple days ago, and she still remembers the room number. They had to meet in the lobby to avoid a lot of unnecessary interruptions and, and in, um, in trying to get a hold of the child, she still remembers the room number where they went. It was that, I mean, it just stuck with her. We had a follow-up visit. A caseworker was working um, 
had gone by to see the trial and check and see how they were doing and grandma was up there and helped with the prescription and and a new cane she had lost in the storm and things like this to help the family that was supporting this little girl little girl was sitting there trying to blow bubbles and not being real successful and she just reached out to the caseworker and handed her this little bottle of bubbles and the caseworker sat there next to her bed blowing bubbles with the little girl reaching out and started to giggle as children you know will do but that kind of thing after all that the child and it brought it home of why i get the report to uh, the red cross every once in a while